joining us now is John Nathaniel Pascal. He is the stepson of Paul Henri Nargelet, one of the five men who boarded the Titan for its final journey. John, uh, thanks so much for, for joining us at such a hard uh, time. Got to ask, how are you guys doing right now? Um, it's a lot to handle right now. Um, obviously, as you can probably imagine, um, we've been living a nightmare this week. And I, I think, you know, that goes for all the families involved in this. Uh, you know, we can speak about PH, but um, it's been truly just a nightmare of an experience that I hope no one ever has to go through again. Um, but we are, we're sticking together um, as a family and getting um, through it all uh, one moment at a time. These last few days, uh, I can't even imagine. Uh, were you being provided updates on what was going on with, with the search and rescue? Uh, I, I'll speak for myself. I was informed um, directly with the Coast Guard starting on Wednesday. Um, so I was uh, speaking with them from uh, with other families, and we were given information that way. Um, earlier than that, I had just been talking with um, PH's daughter and his wife, um, getting updates that way. So I was informed throughout the week. Um, I originally found out about it early Monday morning. Um, but yes, I, I was informed, um, especially in the in the final days. D did your family get to talk to PH before he before he embarked? Uh, yes, I believe um, I believe some of his kids did. I, I I'm not 100 percent sure, but I I know obviously you know with Sunday being Father's Day, I'm sure he got a few messages from his kids. Um, I had spoken to, with him a few. Uh, weeks before as well. I was actually planning on seeing him um, just after the 4th of July. We had scheduled some time to to get together. Um, and I had seen him in May as well when he had mentioned that he was going on this trip. Um, and of course, knowing him and how many times he's been down there, I honestly thought nothing of it, um, other than it's another exciting trip for PH10 to the Titanic, um, something he's done so many times and has been so successful with. So. Um, so yeah, that's that's kind of the extent of the communication we've had with him. Yeah, he seems to be such an icon to the diving community. Can you tell me a little bit more uh, about PH? Yeah, I, it's. I'm glad you brought this up because there's so many you know places online you can read about the number of dives he's done, the places he's been, and that's tremendous, right? But there's so much more to him as a person that I you know I wanted to talk about, and um, he was a really incredible stepfather to me. Um, I know sometimes with stepfathers, you know, things can be a little bit tense in the family. My, you know, my father was still in the picture, but um, he was so respectful and more. And of course, as a son, I always wanted, you know, my mother to be protected, right? That, you know, she was okay and loved. Um, he did so much of that. And um, there's so many instances that, you know, I was just blown away by his love and care for me, you know, as, as a stepson. Um, you know, we first met in high school and, you know, in high school for me, uh, which is about 2006. Um, and, you know, we just hit it off really well. And he was so kind to me, um, an incredible sense of humor too. He, I, I think, you know, I want people to use, he's a prankster too. He has so many great stories about pranks he would play and, um, whether it was, you know, in his, in his older days or when he was with the, you know, the French Navy, uh, it was so funny. And we spent so many nights together at the dinner table with my mom, um, and him just, just hearing about the stories he had and, um, you know, those are just incredible moments that I now look back on and, and really cherish. Fearless and, and good humored. I mean, that's a, a what more can you ask for? Uh, as you think of him, what is his legacy to you? Oh, boy. Um, I think it's kind of what you said in terms of being fearless, right? I mean, there's so much of the discussion now is about risk, you know, and the risks that everyone took going on board and the risks that you know, everyone has just, you know, in terms of getting in a submersible period, right? Um, there's so much risk in this world, in, in, in my opinion. And um, I think, you know, going into this, he knew, you know, the risks that were that were uh, possible with this expedition. Um, but again, he was he was fearless and, you know, he was just so loving. And, um, and it's not only just his family. I saw the way he interacted with, you know, coworkers as well. Um, and other friends in the community. Um, he was just such a, a well-respected guy that handled everything, you know, so professionally, uh, whether it was, you know, Titanic-related, expedition-related, um, or it was just everyday life. Um, I'm just 
so impressed by, you know, the big heart, you know, he has and um, sense of humor he brought. And it's, um, it's just a truly devastating day to, um, to hear this news. And how would you describe his, his love of the ocean? I mean, in my opinion, it was his home away from home. Um, he was just so comfortable out there um, and in any, any ocean, any, any lake, where, wherever. It was the water. Um, the water was just so connected to him. Um, and that especially goes for the Titanic. Um, you know, he, he put so much of his life into that, um, into that ship. And, you know, I think it, it showed that he's, you know, in my opinion, the, the, the world expert on the Titanic. Um, and he, you know, he talked about it pretty frequently with us. Um, you know, of course we talked about other things, life in general and all that stuff that, you know, you would with a stepfather, but, um, but he, he was so, he was so passionate about it. And there were so many, uh, curiosities he had and places he wanted to explore and shipwrecks he wanted to dive on. Um, it was so cool. I, it's funny. He talked about it so much. I almost like became numb to it in a way because of how much he talked about it and how cool it was. It's just, Oh, you know, another amazing, you know, expedition you get to go on. That's so cool. And, um, but yeah, he, he's just, just such an inspiration in terms of the amount of work he put in and his fearlessness with everything. And finally, it's, it's still too soon to know exactly what happened down there. Um, but I want to ask, given everything that we've started to see with OceanGate and its history, uh, what are the questions that you have for that company or the family has for that company going forward? I think for me, you know, uh, just uh, just understanding, um, you know, were, were all the safety procedures followed as closely as possible? Um, you know, was was everyone aware of everything that was going on? Um, was there anything that was missed during any kind of inspection? Um, but, you know, at the same time, you know, anyone who gets into those submersibles knows the risks that could happen. You know, nothing's, in, nothing's perfect, nothing's impenetrable. Um, you know, there's risk any time you, you get into a submersible. So um, I understand that. And I think his entire family does as well. Um, but I think those are the things that, you know, come to the top of mind and, um, you know, we'll, we'll hopefully get those answers at some point. John, thank you so much for your time. Our condolences to your entire family. For, we're praying for you guys. Thank you. Hey, I really appreciate it. Thanks for watching our YouTube channel. Follow today's top stories and breaking news by downloading the NBC News app.